thought we'd, as we said, the, when we started our service tonight, we'd do something a little different tonight, a little special to be together. Uh, but tonight, turn in your Bibles to John, uh, John chapter 1. And uh, don't be alarmed, I, I planned for the time, okay? I understand what time it is. <laughs> I do want tonight to uh, look at uh, just some of these scriptures here tonight, uh, really looking to uh, the, the impact of the incarnation of Christ, in other words, Christ becoming man, Christ becoming flesh for you and I. And uh, again, don't be alarmed, but I do want to start in reading in verse 1, and we're going to read down through uh, verse 17 or so, and I kind of tonight want to let the scriptures, again, speak for themselves, but we will be then just sharing some thoughts here tonight and uh, really looking at uh, what Christ did in becoming a man, what Christ did in becoming on, taking on human flesh and being that sacrifice for us. And then as we read through these, I want you just to even begin to contemplate Christ leaving heaven. Just get that thought in your head. Christ leaving heaven, coming to be born in flesh, knowing that one day he would die for you and me. And as we look at these verses, just let that thought sink in and hopefully this will impact you through the Spirit as well. But John chapter 1 and verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. We know that to be Jesus Christ. The same was in the beginning with God. In other words, remember, they have always existed uh, God was not created. Jesus Christ was not created. They existed from beginning on. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And in him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This is speaking now of John the Baptist, verse 7. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that light in Jesus Christ, that all men through him might believe. See, folks, that's God's hope and prayer for the world, is that through his son Jesus Christ, that all men would come to believe in him as their savior. He was not that light, John the Baptist in verse 8, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, Jesus Christ is who he's speaking of here, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. Again, think of that. The creator... Jesus Christ himself, the creator of all, becoming part of his creation. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the love that was shown? Can you imagine his love for you and I, that he would do that. Obviously being obedient to his father, obviously knowing what the cost was, but willingly giving his life for you and me. Being part, taking upon that human flesh and all that came with it. Sadly, in verse 11, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Listen, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are born again. That's why we use these terms. They're in the Bible. Verse 14, And the Word was made flesh. Jesus Christ was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received the grace for grace. 
for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Back to verse 14 just for a minute for context. Verse says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The creator of this universe became flesh for you and me. We think of this term of the incarnation. We think of Christ taking upon flesh and becoming a man uh, like you and I are. Being fully man and yet being fully God. We don't totally understand that. We don't totally comprehend that. But folks, the word of God is true. That's exactly what took place. Jesus Christ in all of his glory, in all of his deity, fully God and yet fully man. What a sacrifice leaving the awesomeness of heaven. You know, you and I on this earth can only wonder, and someday we will be there and we will see it in all its glory. We will, be, we will understand what it is to be partakers in heaven when we get there. We will understand what it's like to be with our Savior. We'll understand what it's like to have a glorified body and a mind. We'll understand what it's like to, as your testimonies were tonight, have fellowship for all of eternity. Boy, that's going to be a great day. And as we try to even grasp that tonight, the wonder of it all, the wonder of how great heaven is, knowing that Jesus Christ left that behind for a moment for you and me. For what? To die. To die. And then as we talked about this morning, not just die in a sense of getting old and frail or coming down with the disease or getting in an accident. He came to give his life as a sacrifice for you and me. That perfect sacrifice, leaving heaven knowing that it was only through his blood that the world could be saved. And so chose to be that sacrifice. Listen, as I said, we have trouble understanding this, but in faith, we believe what God has said. Charles Spurgeon once had a quote to this, and I need you to listen closely. It said, he who never began to be, speaking about Christ, he who never began to be, but eternally existed, began to be what he eternally was not, and continued to be what he eternally was. Isn't that something? The creator always existing took on himself the form of a man took on himself the very thing he created to give his life to shed his blood listen the virgin birth is so important it's the crux of our doctrine it's 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 the crux of what we believe if Jesus Christ did not do this if he didn't come and take upon himself the form of man if he didn't come and be born of a virgin you and I would have no savior you see all those pieces go together just as, just as if we said this morning, if he had just been born but then never died, we would have no Savior. All of these pieces co-mingle together. There's so much important, importance in all of these elements. And at this time of year, as we look to this birth of Christ, as we look to this incarnation of Jesus Christ, folks, as I said this morning, we of all people ought to be the most thankful. The only way that Jesus could become the means of God's grace to provide salvation was by taking on humanity. And that is the miracle of the incarnation of Christ. That's the miracle of it all. 
Him taking upon himself the form of a man. One, one author said, it is the basis from which we receive both grace and truth. By his nature, God must maintain both. He cannot be anything other than perfectly truth, truthful. He could never accept our sins and call them anything other than what they are. But he is also gracious, extending salvation to us through his son that's what the birth of Christ is all about that's as we reflect and we so desire to go out and share with the world around us this time of year and this Christmas season boy there's so much truth to be told that this son of God came was born in flesh lived a perfect life and gave that life so that you and I could be saved but without the incarnation of Christ without the virgin birth of Christ none of this would be possible Amen. what a savior we needed the humanity of Jesus to help us understand God and the nature of his love for us puts these things in perspective and then tonight I'll close with this thought the, the measure of God's love for us the measure of God's love for us can be seen in the miracle of the incarnation you know, we talked about his love this morning. We talked about how the Father loved us and sent his Son. We talked about how Jesus Christ loved us and was that perfect sacrifice. And when we begin to look at these verses in John, and we could look at uh, other verses as well that uh, point to uh, the incarnation of Christ and, and, and discuss what we're discussing tonight, the measure of God's love is seen through Christ coming to this earth. See, he didn't necessarily have to. God the Father didn't necessarily have to send his son. But he so chose to in his love for you and I. And then our Savior Jesus Christ willingly, obediently came and was born in the flesh. You know, I contemplate that, and I was even thinking about it today, and I'll close with this thought. You know, just in how we are human. We know what it's like to maybe have a bad day or get a cold or just not feel okay. We know what it's like to rejoice and to share in good things, and as we did tonight, have these testimonies. I think sometimes we forget that. Jesus was that way as well. In his humanity, he understood what it was, for he was flesh that dwelt among us. And through all of that, never sinned. Through all of that was that perfect sacrifice for you and me. Just think about that for a moment. How easy it is for you and I just to flippantly make a comment in anger or to speak a cross word or to have a cross thought Jesus Christ never never not once sinning never thought you know what this just isn't worth it you know what I love these people so much and as we read tonight, and they don't even receive me. Why am I here? He never had those thoughts. He willingly came to be the Savior for you and I. Fulfilled that perfect sacrifice. That's what this time of year is all about. Again, as I said this morning, then our responsibility is, and it is a weighty one, we need to be sharing the gospel to the world around us. 
We need to be sharing that this Savior, this Son of God, that the creator of all that there is and will be is the one that came in flesh and gave his life for the world. That's our responsibility. We serve a great God. The miracle of the incarnation of Christ. I hope it's been a blessing to you tonight. I hope you've been blessed being here in our services. I hope singing these songs and hearing these testimonies, hearing God's word has just encouraged your heart tonight. So good to be with God's people. So good to be in the house of God and to see God work and do great things here in this church and amongst you folks as we serve the Lord together. We serve a great God. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful that we can come tonight. We are so thankful that we can, uh, as we have done, sing these songs, uh, these Christmas songs even, uh, to bring to our mind what Christ has done by coming to this world. Lord, we then heard these testimonies of just how good you are. God, how you provide all of our need, how you watch and care over us, how you draw men to yourself that they would be saved. And then, God, tonight as we've opened your word just for a few moments and we again reflect on Jesus Christ becoming flesh to be that perfect sacrifice for us, God, help us to never forget the incarnation of your Son. Fully God, fully man, giving his life so that we may live giving his life so that we can have eternal life. Help us to never forget. And then help us to leave this place burdened to speak to those around us. Christ, even in that, we thank you for giving your life. We thank you for becoming flesh and being that sacrifice for us. Father, we pray you bless now our invitation in Jesus' name. Amen. Mr. Brown, would you come?